until I, I end up getting eighth in the heat race. And I remember being on the start line. I had to ask the two mechanics next to me to put my button in. Yeah. Like <laughs> and they're like, where's your mechanic? I'm like, dude, I'm just here by myself chilling. So. <laughs> You can work as hard as you want, but I'm never going to be as good as Jet Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> that f is a freak. <laughs> I just f I met a gypsy. Like, it's not physically that hard for me. Like, I can get fit enough to do it. But just being able to stay mentally in the game and like have the intensity. Like last night, I got depressed and I watched Millville <laughs> 450 Moto 2 from last year just to get a bit of tomac because I was so sad. Oh, and like the, the f Dude, the intensity that that dude can ride at. Like just sprint speed. for They sprinted for him and Sexton last year for Moto 2 sprinted sprinted for 35 minutes how, and i'm like i don't know how they ride the 450s like that that we were out at hammett before the season and um like the star guys had hired it or whatever and i i got to go out there because um i know ricky the suspension guy Gilmore. so I, I went out and i yeah yeah and i paid um star to get out on there and tomac was doing a moto and we we're watching him and he's literally riding the 450 like it's a 85 and just clutch and and i'm just like how strong is this dude how, like how can he ride like that and those guys are doing that and then you take that outdoors and doing it for 35 minutes on a rough gnarly outdoor track the level of fitness that they have to have and it's got to be somewhat their talent to be able to perform and do those things and not use all the energy that you are because I, I still don't understand some of the times how they're so amazing on dirt bikes over here. Yeah, and just the intensity to like... So I did that one lap the other day where I was like, I'm going to really... I'm going to put me fucking nuts and my chips all in the, in a pile here and I'm going to like have a go. I couldn't have done that for more than that lap. You know what I mean? Like, and it's not even physically, it's mentally. Like I needed a break. <laughs> like I couldn't yeah, concentrate, yeah. you know? And like to be at that level and to have, like I actually don't understand the intensity, like the way they can bring that intensity to the track. Like, so Formula One, for example, it's like you've got to be a machine. Like, there's some crazy shit, like, uh, I think it's Jetta, or oh, fuck, I can't, there's one street circuit, but I text Danny last year, and I was like, bro, are you fucking serious? Like, they're in, they're in this wall, like, tiny wall, and it's nighttime, like, because the, you know, they got the camera that goes in the helmet, and you can actually see, I'm like, bro, that, that's not okay, like, what you're doing is not cool, I'm like, does it feel fucked? And he's like, oh, this is one track where it feels pretty fucked so they're sending it right and it's crazy tight gnarly like what they're doing is on some shit as well but it's like the same braking markers it's the same turn in it's the gears the sa like everything is the same like you've you've got to be like in a slot in a window locked in you can't make a mistake like that's different to just be like, arr, 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 arr. <laughs> like just doing what Tomac and like what he does outdoors, especially is just fucked. <laughs> like, fully... like going back and watching the old races where it yeah. just like goes into beast mode and just comes through the pack. And I just wonder, it almost makes you think that their level is so high, but it also, when you take a step back, he is human in some way because he can't do that every time. He can't yeah. he can't do that every time. Yeah. But when they do like those guys do it, it's just like how the hell? And I always thought like when I started mountain biking, it, it shows you because you're like separated from the, the like a motor and all that type of stuff, you I would make a mistake on a mountain bike when my heart rate's in the one eighties or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be like the stupidest little mistake, but your brain's trying to think of like and move and all this type of stuff. But you're trying to do that while you're affected by the heart rate being so high. And that's why I think sometimes you see stupid crashes on like dirt bikes at the races and it 
that's why. So like you're trying to make decisions when your heart rate is, is just so high. Jacked. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that sort of explains why mistakes do happen in dirt bikes. Is sometimes you're just like, how the hell did that happen? Yeah, but I th- I look at um like that moto for anyone that wants to know why I'm just carrying on like a dickhead. Like literally, just go and watch Millville Moto Two 2023, and just watch what Eli was doing. Like you know, you got the right hander before the finish line at Millville, then they got the finish line tabletop. Yeah, like he's coming out of that corner on a 450. And the things like almost loop it, like he's, it's wedged, like as fast as that bike will go. And he's like on the back wheel. Like It's like the thing wants to rip his, rip his face off and it doesn't phase him at all. Like he's just chilling, you know? Yeah. And like, I just, that, that's what I don't understand. Like if I even get to that level on a 450, like I'm actually scared. It'd be cool to be able to like just get strapped onto the back of back of the right and see the speed that they can do outdoors and, and stuff. Because when you, I would always make my dad after the nationals back home, we'd stay and would walk the track afterwards just to show him like how, how gnarly, gnarly it was. It, yeah. Because you can't really tell unless you're out there, but the national tracks get absolutely obliterated and they're just, it's, I guess it comes down to the same thing as, in supercross when the whoops get blown apart and those guys are still just skimming straight across the top like it's the same with outdoors when it gets rough and gnarly those guys just continue that beast mode speed and it's just like how the hell are they riding through a section like that that fast yeah that's one of the wild things about supercross and motocross as well like you can go tandem in an f1 car you can go tandem in a v8 supercar i've been on the back of a bike with jack miller and that was that actually fucked me up like that was just the same shit like how you'd look at tomac and go like that's unbelievable it's just different on a moto gp bike like it's it's hard to comprehend in the same because it looks so smooth it's so like it's so fluid but yeah that was like i'd ne- i wasn't even scared <laughs> like it was so yeah. like i went past scared but yeah, it's just like what what those guys do is just super fu- like superhuman. Nah, yeah, like I often think that coming from Australia, whenever you're on a track back home and you've got like a a Ferris or one of the the top guys in Australia and they're riding and you look and you think, well, there's no possible way you could go faster. Any track I've ever been to, there's three seconds you could pull out of that because yeah. that's what the top guys here would do. They would legitimately go three seconds a lot quicker we're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else this is your chance to become a part of the gypsy gang and as a special bonus if you sign up to an annual membership you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built tc125 gypsy gang